I can also play some elevator music if you would like some. <laughs> um, sure, do you have a favorite soundtrack? I know that, that Jason likes elevator music, so <laughs> you have some, at least he'll enjoy it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's true. I think we got the thumbs up from Jason on that one. Did you? Okay, good. Yeah. good. So that Hans, it is all yours whenever you're ready to start. Sure, sure. I think we may as well kick in. So I see some of you are signing on from Europe. You know, we also had the uh, uh, second running of the same presentation uh, in what I would say kind of Europe friendly time frame. Although it's only 9 p.m., um, maybe 10, depending on where you are in Europe. So it's not too bad. Anyway, welcome for uh, this uh, Global Data Summit uh, series that we're doing on uh, a few data and automation related topics. Uh, I see a couple of you are also attending at the last session we had. Uh, for today, we are going to be listening to a presentation on agile dimensional analysis within Data Vault. Um, and actually, uh, what's interesting about this, this topic, uh, our speaker, uh, Daniel Fagerstrom, who's going to be delivering uh, with Top of Minds uh, in, in Stockholm. Um, we had some conversations about this and uh, had a hard time uh, trying to consider what might be another name for it. And of course, everybody had a lot of different opinions. Um, I kind of liked uh, infused analytics. You know, it sounds kind of cool, infused analytics. Um, also, uh, embedded presentation layer or embedded presentation access, which maybe makes you wonder a little bit more about what you're getting into today. Um, but uh, one of the things uh, we can all maybe agree with in, in today's environment is uh, in general for enterprise integration initiatives, uh, less layers is better. So uh, if we can uh, get the dimensional analysis embedded within, uh, maybe that's a path we should be looking at. Um, now I see we have uh, another continent represented. So Adam, welcome. It's good to see, see you on as well. Um, as we get into today's presentation, we'll do approximately uh, 40 minutes uh, with Daniel and then we'll have time. Uh, that includes should include some time for Q&A. Um, once we finish with that and the Q&A is done, we'll have uh, some discussions where we can split off into breakout sessions as needed. Uh, to chat with uh, Daniel further about the Agile Dimensional Analysis and or to talk more about Global Data Summit or uh, other topics maybe from single store depending on uh, what the group is looking for at the end of the presentation. Um, one of the interesting things uh, about this, if you've been to, I know some of you have been to the Global Data Summit uh, actual summits, uh, we, of course, several years ago, uh, started this off with physical summits, and the worst challenge we had to overcome was snow at that time. Snowstorms uh, got in our way a little bit, but other than that, uh, we were doing pretty well. Of course, now with COVID and uh, travel and, and restrictions for conferences, uh, we're doing just a series of these shorter events um, until such a time as we can get back together as a group. 
Um, John Carpenter, also on, is uh, co-founder for the summits, and Laura, of course, is arranging it. Thank you, Laura, for today. Appreciate it. Um, so, uh, John, anything else uh, you'd like to add? Otherwise, we can kick off with Daniel. No, nothing to add, Hans. Looking forward to the presentation today. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, same here. Well, then I will turn it over uh, to uh, Daniel. And uh, go ahead, unless, Laura, you had something else you wanted to mention for today's agenda. Uh, no, I think we're all good. Just feel free to drop any questions in the chat. Um, and we will either get those answered um, as we go or at the end um, from Daniel. Okay. Perfect. Daniel, you're up. Yeah. Okay, so I will present the method to create a dimensional mark in an agile way within the data vault. And it will be done without needing for the building of a separate dimensional layer. Uh, I'm Daniel Fagerstrom. I'm a senior specialist at Top of Minds and have a background in research. And I build um, data warehouses and big data and um, yeah, streaming data. Uh, for, for the last couple of decades. So uh, today I will start to give some uh, background and motivation why we would like to do this. Uh, I will describe the main ideas and I will demonstrate them uh, on, on a simple uh, case uh, on uh, transaction facts. Uh, after that, I, I will go, go uh, into a little bit more details about the basic uh, concept uh, for, for the method. I will uh, tell a bit more about uh, how it's uh, agile and uh, end with some conclusions. So uh, when we are building a data warehouse, it's, it's very important to be able to deliver important metrics uh, early in the project. So we would like to do that in days or weeks rather than months or years. That is uh, far too common in, in, the, in the big data warehouse uh, projects. And to be able to do this, we, we need something that is pattern-based so we don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. And we will would preferably like to use it with automation so that we can generate um, uh, part of, of, of the code. Uh, we are basing this on dimensional modeling because it's uh, still the, probably the, the best way to do uh, analysis. But the, the physical part of Kimball modeling is not that uh, agile. Uh, so we, we need a more agile way to do dimensional modeling. So um, in what way is uh, Kimball uh, not uh, agile? So uh, first of all, uh, when you build uh, Kimball models, so your ETL for facts and dimensions tend to be rather complex. And uh, this is uh, because um, it uh, often combines uh, both business logic and uh, information integration and uh, lots of more, tech, uh, more of technical details in, in the same ETL uh, code. And this makes it hard to develop and uh, often even more hard to maintain. If you have uh, built uh, initial the dimensional model and uh, you want to add dimension fields, it can often require reloading of, of all your history. And if you have um, huge fact tables, uh, which you often have nowadays, it can be, be uh, a lot of work to, to, to do that. Uh, it's uh, even worse to add new dimensions. And, uh, yeah, in, in summary, uh, all this makes uh, change hard. And um, if change uh, is hard, it's not uh, going to be that uh, agile. Uh, so uh, 
now I will uh, describe how you can do dimensional analysis uh, within the data vault uh, model. So uh, the basic idea is uh, if you are, yeah, if you are, uh, today uh, build um, dimensional models uh, based on data vaults, so you, you are already going to have all, all the, the fact and dimension attributes in your satellites. But uh, it's, uh, if you to, to try to do uh, uh, dimensional analysis uh, directly in your data vault, it's going to be quite hard because um, you are going to, to need to uh, join lots of uh, links and uh, you have um, complex uh, temporal logics. So doing, um, um, doing dimensional an analysis directly in your data vault is uh, fairly compl complicated. But uh, what if we pre-calculated the relations between fact and the dimension attributes? Uh, if we did that, then uh, uh, the rest of our analysis, uh, ana analysis would be very, rather simple. So, so that's the main idea. And um, I will present the, the details. Okay, so um, my approach is that uh, I would first demonstrate uh, the idea on, on a simple data vault. And uh, from this uh, data vault, uh, I will build a dimensional model and uh, it will be a transactional fact. Uh, so within Kimball modeling, you have a couple of different uh, uh, fact types and, uh, and transactional facts. Uh, it, it's the most common and fundamental uh, type of fact. So I, I will focus on, on, on that to do on this uh, presentation. So a transactional fact describes the numerical measurement of a business event. So uh, a business event, it could be uh, something like a sales line item and then uh, then uh, the numerical measurement could be something like a cost or a number of items or both. Uh, in a gaming system, it could be a wager. In, in a telecom system, uh, it could be a call. So we, those are exam examples of, of transactional facts. And the granularity of uh, this kind of transactional fa facts is going to be one row per, per, for each uh, event. So uh, now I'm going to show a, a very basic uh, sales uh, line data vault. So it's like a hello world example for, for data vault. So uh, if I want to build the data vault, I I'm going to start from some kind of, of, of input data. And for, for, for a sales line, we are probably going to have something like a sales order line transaction. So we will have one row for, for each uh, sales. And um, uh, from, it is going to contain um, um, hopefully an order ID or an order line ID. Uh, some kind of business date, uh, a number of, of um, metric values connected to, to the transaction, like line total, order quantity. Uh, and then we might have uh, keys to, to other things that are involved, like product ID, sales or ID, special offer ID, and probably a lot of other things. From this, we could uh, start to build a data vault. So um, for, from the uh, key, we, we are building a hub and we are using the hub key in the satellites and uh, links also. From our attributes, and in this case, we, we, we have mainly metrical attributes. We are building one or maybe several satellites. And from the keys, we could build the uh, link or maybe several links. And um, if we are building this, this uh, data vault based on a transaction, um, we are probably going to have uh, 
one satellite uh, and uh, one link for, for each uh, event ID. So it's going to be a one to one relation. Uh, at least in, in most cases. Uh, we simplify uh, this a little bit and uh, remove the, the attributes. So here we have a satellite that contains uh, orderline meshes. We have a link to, uh, oh, sorry, we, are, we have a hub that, that describes the, the orderline event. We have a link to, to a product. And uh, within these satellites, we, we have various metrics. And to make it a little bit more interesting, we, we add a little bit context. So we have a, a product satellite that contains the various um, product uh, attributes. And uh, we have a, some kind of product categories where we have a link between the product hub and the product category hub. And it might be that uh, we uh, recategorize the product after a while. So uh, we have an effective timestamp, or sorry, we have an effectivity satellite to uh, keep track on, on what, what um, link that is, is current. And we also have a, a ref, uh, reference table with dates in. In, in uh, those two satellites where we have uh, context data. So from more uh, dimensional modeling uh, perspective, we, we have our metrics values in this satellite and we have the context attributes in, that correspond to dimensions in those two satellites. But uh, this far we, we have a fairly standard data vault. Uh, so I will call satellites that, uh, that mainly contain meshes, uh, like fact attributes, I will call them metric satellites. It's, it's uh, ordinary satellites, but uh, just to keep track on what we use for facts and what we use for dimensions. And uh, a metric satellite will typically describe the business events, for example, a sales transaction. Uh, in most cases, we will only have one version per, per hub key. And uh, to make the, this something like a fact that we, we, we need to have only one version per hub key because otherwise if we start to do um, uh, groupings and uh, sums, we, we are going to, to uh, count uh, some uh, things more than once. So uh, most of the time, we will uh, get this for, from a construction, but uh, if that's not the case, we, we, we need to, to create a business satellite that uh, ensures uh, that we only have a one version of a metrics uh, satellite for, for each hub key. If uh, the data in the metric satellite is too primitive for our analysis needs, we could create calculated measures in a business satellite and use uh, that instead. And um, in all kinds of dimensional analysis, we are interested in, in uh, when things happen. So we, we need an effective time stamp for business time for, for each metric satellite. Uh, yeah, the, the rest of the satellites contain context and uh, it could be things like yeah, customer data, product data, attributes about shops, places, and so on, and so on, describing uh, attributes. And uh, it's good if we have uh, effective timestamps here as well, so that we can uh, choose the, the, the uh, right version of, of, of the attributes for, 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 for for each uh, event. So uh, this far we, we have an ordinary um, data vault containing some satellites that uh, contains metrics and some of it containing uh, uh, context data. And from, from this, we will uh, do dimensional an analysis. And to do that, I will 
introduce a new construction that is called a pointer or a version pointer. So uh, a version pointer contains this pre-calculated relation between a, a, a event tab or a metric satellite row and the context satellite row. So um, as we had uh, one metric satellite before each event tab, they are going to have the same keys. So it, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's an identifier for, for them. And I will illustrate this for some basic cases where we have a direct relation between the, the metric satellite and uh, some, some, uh, some uh, context data when uh, we have the uh, one link between them and when we have se several links between them. And when we have uh, done that, uh, we, we will have a structure something like this. So we will have a, we will have a event tab in, in the middle and uh, that is could have a one-to-one -one connect, uh, connection to a sat metric satellite containing uh, metrics. We have a number of, of um, context satellites. Uh, uh, yeah, describe the context of, of, of the event. And we have the version pointers that, uh, that uh, describe the connection between, between the hub or, or, or the uh, metric satellite and the, the context satellite. So this is the basic construction. And we can see that it's, uh, it's uh, similar to a star schema in, in a Kimball modeling. So in a, in a Kimball, Kimball model, you have a fact in the middle. And uh, in our case, it corresponds to an event hub with, with metric satellite. And we have a direct connection uh, with foreign keys to product dimensions or various dimensions. And um, here we have an indirect relation for a version pointer to, to context satellites. So, uh, yeah, this is the main idea. So now we are going to create that. So uh, we start for, from the data vault we had. And uh, to, so, uh, I could already use this and uh, do thumbs of it to, to um, see my, my complete sense, but uh, most of the time I want to group it all the time. So I would like to connect it to uh, my reference table with uh, data attributes in. And to do that, uh, I basically could do, do a data conversion for, 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 from, from the effective timestamp. So it's, it's uh, uh, this kind of simplified version point that I'm calling pointers. So there is only one version for, for each row in a reference table. So this is a pointer. Uh, then we continue to, then we want to, um, so after this, we can start to do uh, analytics on, on uh, our order lines based on, on date. So we, we can uh, check the, the says last month or something like that. Uh, next, we want to, uh, to uh, be able to group it on, and analyze it based on products. And we have the product attributes in the product main satellite. And uh, here we, we need to go from, from this satellite to this satellite. And we do that by, uh, by uh, yeah, joining over, from this satellite over this uh, link to, to, to uh, this one. Uh, but in, in this uh, satellite, uh, we could have uh, several uh, different uh, versions uh, that were, was current uh, during the different uh, time periods for, 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 for uh, products. So um, on this, we have an effective timestamp and we need to calculate the end uh, timestamp for, for, for each version. And we could uh, do that in, in a you know, with a window function or something like that. And then we, we constrain what, what uh, row we are using based on the effective timestamp from here. And um, the result of this calculation goes in a, in a version pointer. 
In the next step, we want to do the same for, for uh, product categories. To do that, we need to um, join through two links and um, we need to constrain it, constrain it on, on, um, uh, to, to, on the effective timestamp here. But it, it could also be that we have the several, we have the changed uh, category for, for a product. So we also need to constrain it on an on a effectivity satellite. And based on that, we get the, based on that calculation, we get the version pointer to the product category. So um, after this way, we have the uh, pointers to our different uh, context uh, satellites. And um, we could remove these uh, links to, uh, to see that we have something that looks a little bit like a, a star schema. So um, this, this is the main idea in this method. Uh, I have, have some code for the version pointers. So I'm not going to have time to go through that, but um, it's uh, based on uh, it's template driven and it can be generated. I have done some proof of, proof of concept uh, generation for, from metadata to, to this kind of code. So the, this is a date pointer. It uh, basically it goes from the effective timestamps and calculate a, a date. So it's fairly simple. The version point is one link away, a little bit more complicated. I need to calculate the effective timestamp end to, to get the time range. And I do that way with a um, with, um, um, window function. And then I need to join all, all the links and hubs and the constraint on, on, the, on the, the time window. For two links away, I, I need to uh, calculate the, the effective timestamp uh, for, for, for the effectivity satellite as well and uh, do a little bit more joins or overlinks. But, um, this is uh, template driven, so uh, it's, uh, it's quite mechanical to, to create those and it can be uh, generated. Now a little bit more details about the involved concepts. So uh, the, the main concept we have had is uh, that uh, some satellites in orbit involved is containing uh, factor attributes and metrics, and we call them metric satellites. The um, rest of the satellites are context satellites that contain a context for, for, the, for the, the metrics. So metric satellites can, uh, corresponds to, to fact tables and context satellites to dimension uh, tables. We have the version pointers that um, is a pre-calculation dated many to one relation between a metric satellite uh, and the uh, um, context satellite. And uh, we, we uh, create those to, to make uh, analysis queries simple. And uh, we call uh, the Full package of, of this uh, presentation vault. So it's um, it could be a part of a data vault, or if you want to uh, split things into layers, it could be a separate uh, layer within your data vault. And it contains the metric and context satellites and the version pointers. So those are, are the main context concepts. A little bit more details about. Uh, details about uh, how a version pointer works. So uh, as I said, it's a man to one relation between the primary key of the metric satellite or maybe an event hub and the primary key of a context satellite. So um, it could be something like this. So we have a hub key for the metric uh, satellite and uh, a load date timestamp. So to, Together, they are, are the primary key for, for, for the metric satellite. And for the context satellite, we have a combination of the hub key for, for the context satellite and the load the timestamp for, for that one. 
Uh, but uh, as I said, we make sure that metric satellite uh, has only one version per criteria. So we can simplify it to have a relation between the metric uh, hub key and the context hub, the pair of the context hub key and the, the loaded uh, timestamps. So um, the table would look something like, like this. So here's the name of the table, metric hub key, uh, context hub key and the uh, loaded timestamp. And we might want to uh, want to add a loaded timestamp to uh, be able to do incremental loading of, of, of the version pointers, but uh, that's more uh, like a technical attribute. Uh, so we, we, this, this is a basic version of, of the version pointer. Um, if we want to do use this directly into in um, in um, reporting tools, it's not going to be that practical because because uh, most reporting tools are, are not that good at um, handling um, um, what is called composed keys like the, the composition of a hub key and, and the loaded timestamp. So we could optimize it a little bit if we want to. Um, so we, we could create the context satellite key. So uh, uh, um, one more key that we use as a primary key for the context satellite. Or, and it could either be a string concatenation or something like that to be between the, 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 the uh, hub key and the loaded timestamp, or, or, or it could be an auto increment key, whatever works best in the kind of database you use. And if we do that, we, we get a simpler structure. So we just have a version point that will just be a re relation between the, the metrics satellite hub key and the cont context satellite key. So something like like this, and if we do like that, it, it will uh, work uh, very well in in in, um, in typical uh, reporting tools. So we have uh, tested it in uh, in Power BI, for example. Um, for uh, for reference tables or um, yeah. Of the satellites uh, where we don't have uh, any versions, we you could say we have a simpler structure called point uh, uh, where we don't keep tra track conversions. And the end result of uh, this is uh, something that yeah, we have already, already seen this, but we, we have an event hub in the middle and it had a, has a one to one relation to a metrics uh, satellite. We have the context satellites and we have the connections to, to them for, for version pointers. So uh, this is the presentation about star schema. And uh, that is the, the structure we will build within the data vault to, to make uh, dimensional modeling uh, yeah, simple to, to do. Uh, yeah. Hans uh, talks uh, a lot uh, about the ensemble modeling, and um, uh, we, we could uh, consider the, this uh, structure as uh, something in an ensemble model as well. So um, in an ensemble model, you, you have a hub in the middle, and then you have the various contexts uh, connected to it. So in, in for for um, for the presentation of what our context is, is the uh, metric satellite, and um, we have a connection to, uh, to um, uh, context satellites and, um, and uh, ref tables for version pointers and pointers. So um, we could uh, consider dimensional mod modeling um, uh, like. Uh, uh, ensemble model over uh, an event. So that's an alt alternative viewpoint. 
in the dimensional modeling, you often uh, use the concept uh, bus matrix. So if you have um, uh, multiple uh, facts and multiple dimensions, you connect them in a bus, mat bus matrix. For the presentation world, we have something similar. So if we have a couple of uh, metric satellites and then a couple of, of um, uh, context satellites or, or ref tables, we can um, connect them from point to some version pointers. So for example, for, for this uh, satellite, if we wanted to, to um, analyze it based on data, we could um, connect it to a data re reference table with, with a pointer yeah, and so on with, with version pointers to satellites. And um, you can build this incrementally. So you, you can fill in your bus matrix uh, one pointer and, or version pointer at the time. Uh, when Kimball uh, dimensional modeling was developed a uh, long time ago, uh, it, it, most uh, analytics work was done in, in the row-based uh, relational databases. And uh, back then, uh, it was quite uh, expensive to have the wide factor rows. So, um, uh, from uh, that um, uh, um, best practice for dimensional uh, models was to use uh, as few um, dimensions as possible and possibly have a very wide dimensions. Uh, but uh, nowadays, uh, most um, analytical databases are uh, column based, uh, and the most uh, uh, analytical uh, tools uh, like uh, yeah, Power BI uh, uh, and so on, they, they are also column based. And in a column based um, uh, database, uh, you can have uh, as many uh, columns as you want. It, it doesn't matter. So it's, it's okay to have many small dimensions. And um, uh, of course, by, by, by using um, uh, satellites uh, instead of dimensions, they are typically, typically be, being much uh, smaller than, uh, than uh, traditional dimensions. But um, in a, in a column-based database, it, it shouldn't matter. So now over to a little bit about in what way this is agile. So first of all, it's, it's based on satellites and it's the standard satellites where we, and for, for, for satellites, they are insert only. You, you, you never have to, to um, uh, update your, your satellites to just uh, insert new versions of them in your tables. And this is uh, true both, both for context satellites and uh, metric satellites. Uh, version pointers are mainly insert only, but the, if you have uh, related data, so you have uh, uh, data array, uh, um, context satellite that uh, arrives uh, late, uh, then um, then uh, maybe it should have been connected to uh, an event that uh, happened earlier. And um, for that, that kind of cases with deleted data, you, you need, might need to uh, reload um, uh, parts of your version pointers. But the, it is still going to be a much more focused uh, uh, reloading because um, um, it's um, you don't need to uh, to reload your satellites, and uh, you you um, you are just need, going to need to reload the one version pointer. So um, compared to that, that the reloading effect is uh, much much more more costly. It allows for incremental development, so um, you can start with just one metric satellite. And uh, you can uh, move it to, to your, your um, analytics tool there directly. And uh, then you can add one context satellite with a version pointer at the time. And um, 
and they continue to to uh, to to uh, do analytics. You know, you never have to reload or uh, or change anything that you already have. So if we compare this to to uh, Kimball modeling, so in a data vault, let's say that I want to um, add a couple of um, of uh, uh, satellites, and I want to be able to um, do an analysis on uh, those uh, satellites. I just uh, add them, add the version pointers. Uh, what I already have uh, had in the model, nothing. Uh, I don't need to, need to um, change anything whatsoever. Everything can stay uh, as it is. If we compare the, this to the Kimball model, if I uh, add a couple of dimensions, I, I will need to um, uh, change my, my uh, fact table, uh, add fields to it. I will need to re retest it and I will. Uh, need to uh, do a reload of it. And if it's something like uh, sales order lines, it could be a huge uh, table and it could be quite costly to, to reload it. So um, if you work with a large amount of data in practice, it can be a very heavy um, operation to, uh, to add new um, uh, dimensions or even, even uh, attributes in the dimensions. And um, uh, a little bit the background. So, uh, I mean, uh, with Data Vault, we will say that the Data Vault is an agile um, uh, integration modeling uh, method, and it's more agile than uh, for the normal form. And um, it, it, it's because of, of a couple of different things, but mainly because of, of links. So, um, uh, Thanks to, to, to the links, you, you can uh, uh, add new relations uh, to, to, to your model without needing to update any previous tables. But if you have a normal form of model, you would need to, uh, to uh, update your foreign keys in your tables. And uh, that's so much more complicated. In the same way, pre the presentation vault um, uh, is more agile than Kimball because uh, we, we do more or less the, the same thing. Uh, and we, we, we have a version point that, uh, uh, instead of, of foreign keys. So thanks to that, we, 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 uh, we don't need to update any fact headers. Uh, we just need to add uh, version pointers. So in some sense we, sense, we could say that presentation vault uh, relates to Kimball in the same way as uh, data vault uh, relates to a third normal form. Yeah, so conclusion. So if we compare presentation vault with Kimball, on the positive side, it allows for completely incremental development. You can just add things. You, you never have to um, to uh, change what you already have. It's pat it's pattern based, so you can generate uh, uh, part of of your code, and it works uh, well in reporting tools. Uh, possible disadvantages is that uh, we get uh, many more objects compared to Kimball modeling. And our queries might be a, a little bit more complex as we are always going through a version pointer. So it's a one step extra. So to conclude, I present the dimensional presentation data that can be built from satellites and using a new construct version pointers. It allows for incremental development and the early delivery of reports. It's patterns based and can be generated from the metadata. So, um, thanks. And uh, over to Hans. 
Oh, no, I think, uh, thank you, Daniel. That's, that's great. Uh, let's open up for Q&A uh, for anyone in the group. Um, go ahead and you can, I think, raise your hand. Is that right, Laura? Or is it possible to allow them to unmute? Uh, they can raise their hand and then I can unmute um, as we call them out. So uh, for those that don't know, the erase hand feature is available under the reactions button. Or you can type your question in the chat as well. I see Adam's hand is up. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yeah, great hey. to hear you, Adam. It's been a while, man, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Damn early here too. I'm not sure your timing's great, but it was, <laughs> it was a good presentation. Thanks, Daniel. It was interesting nice. to see an, you know, an extension of the data vault without having to uh, materialize a whole star schema layer for your reporting tools. Um, sorry, I've just driving zoom here as well get my video going there we go yeah <clears throat> all right thanks for, thanks for that daniel so what i derived from that briefly absorbing the sequel and the fact that you you were creating a key that included the timestamp from the satellites is you, effectively you're creating type two dimensions here yeah um through through these structures so if if you we're going to absorb that into a reporting tool. Sometimes you have requirements for a type one view and sometimes you have requirements for the type two view. Yeah. So I was just wondering about the, um, and, and that scenario. So I'm quite familiar with how Power BI handles it and that that is effectively, you need to carry um, both keys. Um, both the type one key and the type two key to, to relate from the fact back to the dimension. So what this implies is an update. So if you come up with a way of managing that to, because you're, of course, your type one key can change over time. So every yeah, time yeah. you refresh, you've got to update that type one key. Has, have you thought about that in this approach? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I would uh, probably put it in, uh, so uh, it, it would be based on uh, some, um, uh, first I would uh, create a business satellite for, 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 for the type one case. And um, uh, then uh, I would have uh, some um, uh, logic based on the window uh, function uh, to, to uh, create for a current version, to, to select for current version. And, um, mm -hmm. And if I do that in, in a materialized uh, view, uh, it, it will be updated or, or, okay, or I, I, I could, uh, if it's not that much uh, data, I could do it in an ordinary view. And uh, then, then I would uh, have more like a pointer between, um, between the, the um, metrics uh, satellite and um, this uh, type one. Uh, satellite because um, uh, I mean I'm, I'm not only going to have the one version of it mm. of, co of course that's right yes yeah, it's, yeah. it's not it's not um, something that has a time dimension yeah yeah it's a snapshot yeah yeah so so that, that would be one way to, to do it um, uh, in my version point if I want to use it both for type one and type two, two scenarios uh, I, I would uh, make sure that I, I keep for the um, a satellite uh, hub key for, for, for the dimension within my version pointers so, so that uh, I can get, I can uh, choose between uh, using a specific version and using um, the hub key together with um, some mechanism to find the latest version. Okay, good, thank so, you. Something like that. Yeah, yeah that, that makes sense, thanks. So, and you could do both ways, correct, Daniel? I mean, you could do a separate, like you're recommending a separate satellite for the type one or try to get your algorithm to be fluid for max state, either business effective or load. 
depending on your philosophy, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, it depends on how you prefer to build things. Um, uh, me and my colleagues uh, preferred to build uh, business satellites for, for, for mm -hmm. lots of things. <laughs> so we, we tend to start to build uh, as uh, soon as we have some uh, bit more complex logic within our data vault, we tend to build a, a business satellite as a view and, um, and often uh, that, that's uh, efficient enough. And if it's not, we either do, do uh, do uh, some some um, batch loading or, or, of it, or, or uh, using a, a materialized uh, view. Right. Put uh, logic in the business satellites. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for your question, Adam. Yes. No worries. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, did you have another one or anyone else for a question? Piotr, I'm surprised you usually have a question, but uh, of course it's a it's a tough time of day for you as well, right? He can't unmute himself. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe help him out there. <laughs> I just put him on the spot. You know, that's the kind of thing I do. There you go. Yeah. I'm trying uh, to unmute myself. Can you hear no, me? You're good now. We can hear you. Yep, sound good. Uh, yeah, this, this is a little bit a uh, new idea to me. And uh, well, uh, I must say that uh, I thought about uh, using the idea of key instance uh, hubs to uh, employ them to handle some kind of uh, important fact. Uh, that can be used uh, for dimensional modeling. But in this case, uh, I, I'm trying to understand uh, the meaning of the uh, sales order item hub. I think it, this was the name for this uh, uh, hub that uh, we have had uh, for satellites hanging yeah. on. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether it is still similar to key instance concept or maybe this is, uh, it should be considered a kind of uh, business layer. I mean, business uh, hub uh, with uh, uh, all the keys uh, necessary for product, uh, product uh, subcategory. Uh, mm. Yes, so it's, it's like, a, it, it, I mean, it's basically like a key instance. Uh, but but in, in this case, the, the, the the instance already have the key because uh, we, we have some kind of, of, um, of um, order line identifier. So we can use that uh, as, um, as uh, yeah, key instance identifier. So uh, you can see it was uh, less a question, more like uh, trying to translate uh, or say the same in other words uh, to understand if, uh, if I captured the idea. Um, in the meantime, uh, while you are describing this uh, additional table with uh, data reference uh, that uh, is connected to uh, all the pointer tables, uh, I yeah. thought about uh, uh, how it uh, can be used for the slowly changing dimensions. I think that Adam already asked uh, this question. Uh, mm, yeah, uh, from the other hand, I, I'm, I'm not sure I still try to understand that. Uh, yeah, so, so the version pointer, it corresponds to a type two dimension. So uh, uh, me and my colleagues attempt to build all, all our um, data warehouses using a type two dimension. So that's um, like our, our standard way of uh, building things. So uh, when we developed the, this, we, we wanted to make sure that we, we have the good handling of, of type two dimensions. So uh, the version pointer is, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it corresponds to a, a type two dimension. Uh, I think that uh, usually for dimensional modeling, uh, users uh, already 
used to think about uh, kind of two dates uh, in a single table uh, that can be referred uh, to pick up the right version of the uh, record in the dimension table. Uh, I, how it goes with this many tables that uh, you were showing? Uh, I mean, this it was, I think, light green uh, tables uh, and uh, to uh, access uh, the right version in the dimension, dimension there need to be probably uh, many joints. Uh, I think that you were showing this in kind, kind of uh, SQL uh, excerpts, uh, but uh, yeah, again, I uh, uh, SQL uh, was for creating a version pointer. If, oh. if you want to do uh, analysis on, on this, what you would, uh, would uh, need to do is that you, um, uh, yeah, let's say that you start with a metric satellite uh, and you want to, um, um, calculate your monthly sales. Then you would um, join the metric satellites or the version pointer to to the to, yeah to to, to the uh, date uh, table, and um, then you um, group on your date attribute and the sum of your attribute, and then you're finished. So if if you compare that to um, to a Kimball model, you are going to you, you need to join with a version pointer also. So it's uh, it's uh, one step more in your join. But um, all the temporal logic and so on is uh, taken care of uh, when, when we we created the version pointer. So uh, it's uh, it's going to be um, it's going to be. Um, uh, you're going to do your joints in the same way all times. Uh, then the next thing is that um, uh, in nearly all cases I've worked in, uh, the, the, the end users are using reporting tools. So uh, yeah, then you already had, uh, had uh, so you had already created a uh, uh, some kind of, of a structure um, on your input data in your reporting tool. So, um, so um, if you use this in a reporting tool, the only person who needs to, to see, see the version pointers and so on is the person, the person who, who uh, builds the, the uh, yeah, data, data mapping, mapping. Then uh, people who are building reports, they are, they are only going to see the um, uh, attributes and they can uh, do um, do as they always do. So, so uh, they are not going to, to, to see this construction. Yeah, and that same person that knows that mapping through the version pointers would be needing to build out and map to the vault anyway to build the dimensional layer if you're going to persist it. So it's, it's, you know, the logic and the work is, is the same requirement, but now you just go okay. directly to deliver. Which yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, all, all calculations we do here, it's the calculations that you are going to do if you build a dimension model. Yeah. Mm, uh, thank you for the, for that uh, explanation. Um, I think that uh, the best way to uh, test it is uh, just to uh, try on some uh, real life uh, example. Um, at this moment, uh, well, I, I must say that uh, I have probably missed uh, the first part uh, that Hans you were referring to at the beginning. So, yeah, uh, really new to me, uh, maybe. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I will come up with another question. Uh, which part of, uh, of this model can be uh, truly virtualized and uh, uh, which not? But maybe there are also other questions other people to ask some. Well, yeah, actually, yeah. let me jump in real quick, if you don't mind. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, Laura, would you want to uh, look at the breakout rooms? And also, do we have uh, a rep from single source interested in in uh, prepping for their session or for their breakout? Yeah, I don't think we have single store here, but I do have the yeah. breakout rooms ready. So whenever yeah, you guys are ready, I will open them. Yeah, why don't we go ahead and do that? And so on the breakout rooms, uh, who do you have now 
um, for the for the different areas. Yep. Are so I have a, a room for Daniel, so folks mm -hmm. can go and visit with Daniel, um, and then also a room for Hans and John together. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So uh, I assume then room one. This discussion will just continue, so you can get a little bit further into this with Daniel. And I think Piotr, you definitely were interested in doing that. That's great. Um, maybe also uh, Steve or Jason, I assume if you're interested, you're welcome to join that. If you would like to talk a little bit more about what's happening with uh, Global Data Summit or GA or blockchain or any of those topics, you can join John and myself in the breakout too. Otherwise, um, all I can say is thank you for joining us. And uh, Laura, maybe you can guide us through the breakouts.